Tifo is delighted to offer 30-day free trials to read the work of our colleagues at The Athletic, the new home of football writing. Diego Rossi is one of a number of exciting young acquisitions by Los Angeles FC, many of whom were scouted from South American leagues. Eduardo Atuesta, Diego Palacios and Latif Blessing are also promising, but for sheer potential, none are as exciting as Rossi. He tends to play on the left of LAFC's 4-3-3 as an inside forward, cutting in on his right, but plays on the right of Uruguay's under-23s 4-4-2, playing more as an orthodox winger. Rossi can both score and create for others. He netted 16 non-penalty goals last season and scored four, including one penalty, in July's MLS's back group clash with LA Galaxy. Whilst last season many of his goals came from cutting inside or arriving late in the box from the left, these recent goals showed more of a predatory instinct, occupying the penalty area for crosses cut back across the face of goal. This indicates that Rossi could function ably as a striker, running in behind or loitering for low passes. While he's predominantly right-footed, he can finish with his left, as a chip against Mexican side Leon in February showed. Rossi is a dynamic attacker. His dribbling catches the eye, although his ball carrying at the moment promises more than it delivers. Last season, he was successful with only 43% of his 4.3 attempted dribbles per 90, but he carries with such pace he sometimes overruns the ball. He's also still fairly easy to unbalance. But he's extremely skillful, capable of quick changes of direction at speed with a low centre of gravity, helping his slaloming runs. He's also a decent crosser of the ball, able to whip in low balls or chip crosses to the back post, often delivered while running at speed. Rossi is a very promising left inside forward, who can play as a right winger or even as a centre forward, which may be where he ends up. Playing him high up the pitch maximises his goal output, but he's creative and direct enough to be a threat playing on the right too. If he improves his dribbling success rate, which shows signs of happening already, and becomes a little more robust, he can fulfil his very high playing ceiling. Ezekiel Barco is a versatile and creative attacking midfielder. He's played in the hole behind a striker and on the right and left of an attacking trident, as well as in more orthodox wing positions on both flanks. Barco is most effective when playing through the centre, although as a right footer he's able to cut inside and shoot, managing four goals last MLS season, his ability to conjure neat through balls or carry to create space for other players means he's dangerous in the middle. His neat footwork and dribbling means that he can operate well in crowded spaces, drawing fouls or beating more flat-footed defenders to release runners ahead of him. Last season, he managed 5.7 shot-creating actions per 90. That is, one of the last two actions that occurs directly before a shot, equal 13th of all MLS players. His dribbling success rate last season was a good 61.5%, with 1.5 successful dribbles per 90. He also managed to carry the ball 225.7 yards per 90 towards the opponent's goal, 14th in MLS for any player who played 10 or more matches. Rather than always try to beat a man though, Barco is able to stop and lay off the ball, ensuring that he's able to keep possession more frequently than Rossi. This does sometimes mean that an exciting carry is then ended with a conservative pass, but Barco seems to have more caution and is more concerned with recycling possession than always trying to carve out a chance. Atlanta are quite a high-pressing side, and Barco is also a well-functioning element of this, which could increase his attractiveness to teams who favour this approach. Intelligent with the ball, hard-working but technical and dynamic when he needs to be, Barco looks capable of excelling for a top team in Europe. Cole Bassett is one of the United States' most interesting prospects. The 5'10 midfielder generally plays either as an 8 in a 4-3-3 or a 10 in a 4-2-3-1, but has also filled in on both flanks for the Rapids. Bassett thrives in the spaces between the lines, often bursting forwards to support attacks. He's capable of good acceleration, as a well-taken goal from last year against Orlando City shows. He also runs interesting angles, for example cutting inside at 90 degrees to goal when an easier ball might be to an overlapping run. This can unsettle defences and allows Bassett to change the attacking angle quickly. His end product hasn't exactly been stellar. 
Last season, he managed 0.34 goals and two shot creating actions per 90, and that's one of the last two actions that immediately precedes a goal or shot. He's got a decent 79% passing accuracy and can also take corners, but nothing really stands out in the numbers. His height is an asset at set pieces, but he's yet to really materialize as a goal threat. But Bassett has something interesting. Whether it's his quick one-touch passing, his running angles, or his ability to pull the ball back in crossing positions. While still young, he looks like a player who wants the ball and isn't afraid to try things. Whether he's an 8 or a 10 remains to be seen, his late runs would benefit from a deeper starting position, and he's certainly got the tools to be a central midfielder who brings progressive passing and box attacking presence. But his inventiveness, even in flashes, suggests that he could function further up the pitch. New York City's James Sands is an intriguing prospect. He's mostly played in or in front of a back four, but has also played on the right-hand side of a back three. As one would expect from a hybrid defensive player like Sands, he's comfortable in possession and rarely looks hurried. He does have a tendency to play quite conservative passes to the keeper, but he's capable of some nice long-range distribution, especially down the line. He's right-footed and likes to look for angled cross-field passes too to free the left winger, although he can overhit these on occasion. Defensively, he's solid. Last season, he won 1.2 tackles per 90 and successfully tackled 1.1 dribblers per 90. He's got a good technique for getting his body across players and robbing the ball from them by pushing himself in front of them. He's also a proactive defender, looking to step out of the line to win balls as they're being controlled. His time spent as a defensive midfielder has boosted his numbers in this regard, with 4.9 successful pressures per 90, or 36% of those he tries, and 1.7 interceptions. But he does the fundamentals well too, with 1.8 blocks and 4 clearances all per 90. His positioning in the box is also intelligent, reading crosses well and scanning regularly. Now, Given that he can occupy both positions, Sands probably needs to cement one in order to really excel. At 5'11", he may be too small to play as a top-level centre-back, even though that doesn't restrict him in the air, and his mobility, reading of the game and passing suggests that his future could lie as a defensive midfielder. But as teams build from the back, having an intelligent, proactive defender who can pass is also of benefit. Sands' versatility is one of the things that marks him out as a prospect, wherever he ends up playing. It's Scouting Week at TIFO, and to celebrate, we're offering 30-day free trials to The Athletic, where you can really get under the hood of your team. With dedicated journalists for every Premier League team and correspondents for La Liga, the Bundesliga and Serie A, not to mention hundreds of journalists for 10 other sports, there is no better place to read comprehensively about your favourite teams. See the link in the description to sign up for free now for 30 days and join TIFO at The Athletic. Oh,